Compared to the conventional sub-siphoidal approach, ultrasound-guided pericardiosynthesis allows for several access points to reach the pericardial fluid. Patients who would otherwise be deemed too difficult and only get a drain when in critical condition can now get it safely, without inadvertent puncturing of vital structures such as the lung, stomach, or the right ventricle. My name is Robin London, and my collaborator is Ulla Borgqvist, and we are anaesthetists and ICU consultants at Skåne University Hospital in Lund, Sweden. This demonstration is performed by Dr. Borgqvist with the patient's informed consent. He's an elderly gentleman with chronic pericardial effusion that has become symptomatic. The pre-procedure echocardiogram shows a substantial void on all sides of the heart. This amount of fluid allows for several approaches. We always aim to use one that places the pigtail tip as far caudal and dorsal as possible to facilitate drainage. These are the approaches. Subsiphoidal, the parasternal left ventricle adjacent, and the parasternal right ventricle adjacent. Sometimes there's only one approach that works in your patient, therefore you need to master them all. Note that shifting the patient's position will move the effusion, and new approaches may become viable. The sub approach is never our first-hand choice, due to the risk of puncturing the liver or stomach. Also note that the puncture direction is straight towards the right ventricle, and accidental punctures have happened. But, if done properly, the pigtail should end up with the tip in this dorsal location. This is the sub ultrasound view of our patient. The ultrasound fan is vertical in this image, and the left side of the image is caudal, where you can see the liver. And the right is cephalad, where we would puncture, where you can see the approach towards the pericardial fluid. Note the small distance from the fluid to the right ventricle. The main disadvantage of this approach is that the needle trajectory is at an extremely steep angle from the ultrasound probe. It's basically an out-of-plane cannulation. In our opinion, this is not good enough considering all the sensitive structures in the immediate vicinity. In-plane cannulation is a superior technique where the needle tip is visualized at all times. Interventional cardiologists in the cath lab often base their cannulation on a pre-procedure CT scan to visualize the fluid distribution, determine the required needle length, and a suitable angle of approach. They commonly use a sub approach with fluoroscopy guidance, where they try to replicate the angle and depth from the CT scan. Here you can see a micropuncture needle being advanced towards the heart. Once aspiration is positive, indicating that the cannula is in the effusion, They'll introduce a micropuncture guide wire that they thread with an introducer catheter through which they pass a thicker guide wire. Once inside, this guide wire is advanced in order to achieve a fluoroscopy image like this one, where the wire is looped around the heart. Once they have this sign, they'll thread the pigtail drain. This approach adds an unnecessary CT scan and requires that a sometimes unstable patient is moved from the ward to the cath lab. Furthermore, there are technical limitations. Here's a case where most of the fluid is located far from the needle path, making it difficult to reach with the sub approach. Here's another view of the same patient, where you can see how the fluid is distributed along the left ventricle, and a red arrow showing a plausible ultrasound-guided path. Most patients can be approached parasternally. These approaches allow for in-plane needle visualization, lowering the risk of inadvertent puncture of nearby vital structures. A parasternal right ventricle adjacent approach allows for a superficial needle path very parallel to the right ventricle. The tip of the pigtail will be positioned ventrally, and in immobilized patients, this gives suboptimal drainage. So, this approach is mainly suitable for localized diffusions or in emergencies like cardiac arrest. Here you can see the left side of the patient. The ultrasound image is aligned with the probe. This is the parasternal right ventricle adjacent view and Dr. Borgqvist is indicating the direction of puncture. The parasternal left ventricle adjacent approach is also parallel to the heart on the other side, adjacent to the left ventricle. Importantly, the drain tip will end up in the desired dorsocaudal position. This will always be our first-hand choice. Back to our patient, and the orientation in the image is the same. 
the approach to the pericardial fluid is from ventral to dorsal. There are some risks that need to be considered with the approaches presented here. The lung is nearby with the lateral approach. In this personal left ventricle adjacent approach, the lung can be seen entering the ultrasound screen from the right as the patient is breathing. A lung puncture is avoided with ultrasound guidance, and keep in mind that a pigtail placed through moving tissue will cause quite a bit of pain. Now, should the puncture site be very close to the sternum, this is close to the internal mammary arteries. You can see them here on this CT scan. This CT angio shows a patient with a very localized right-sided effusion. The right internal mammary artery lies between the skin and the effusion. It's the white dot of contrast marked with the red circle. The arteries are easily visualized with ultrasound and are easy to avoid. Look at the red flashing left internal mammary artery in this sequence. Coagulopathy is not a contraindication with our approach, as long as the needle is visualized at all times using in-plane ultrasound guidance and relevant arteries are identified, there will be no torrential bleeding. It comes down to how strong is the indication for the drain. We've done pericardiocentesis in patients on ECMO who are fully anticoagulated, and it's been fine, but caution is warranted. A 7 centimeter cannula is usually fine, but with some patients and approaches, a 10 centimeter cannula may be better. In those cases, we prefer an ultrasound-enhanced cannula like this one, a 10 centimeter, 18 gauge vascular sono needle. We never use a micropuncture kit. It's superfluous, provided the operator is experienced with the in-plane needle technique. We'd put together a custom kit suitable for pericardiocentesis, pleural effusions, and pneumothorax. And here's a tray with everything set up for the procedure. It's important to use a guide wire that doesn't kink. We prefer an Amplatz Extra or Super Stiff. We strongly recommend a microconvex probe due to its small footprint and depth penetration. Some colleagues advocate for needle guides. In our experience, these actually restrict needle handling due to the small intercostal space, but they may be of some use in the subcyphoidal approach. The procedure begins with chlorhexidine prepping. Drapes are placed as shown. There's usually no need for sedation. Precise administration of 10 milliliters long-acting anesthesia using ultrasound guidance allows for a completely painless procedure. Inject some of the local into the pericardial space, as some patients experience pain in the next step, where it's pierced with a wide bore cannula. A 2cc syringe attached to the steel cannula acts as a handle, which facilitates tip control. Note the very clear puncture of the pericardium and visually confirm that the cannula enters the black void that is the effusion, away from the beating heart. There is no need for continuous aspiration. Our guiding principle for all cannulation is, if you do not see the tip, do not proceed. As for any in-plane cannulation, lateral displacement is a key skill. See our videos on central lines for tips on cannula handling. With the cannula in place, insert the guide wire. When it's inside the pericardium, some back and forth sweeping can be done to remove septa if the fluid has been standing for a long time. Next, dilate and place the pigtail. Note the small skin entry. This will help making sure there is no bleeding later on. A rotating motion will help if the pericardium is tough. Thread the pigtail and see to it to insert at least 10 centimeters.
it's generally best to aspirate before fixation. Push and pull the pigtail repeatedly while aspirating to reach all of the effusion. When all of the fluid's been removed, leave at least 15 cm of the pigtail inside the patient. Then lock the pigtail using the wire. Make sure the catheter is secured and use gauze to prevent any pressure on the skin. Agitated saline may be used to determine the exact tip location. Use a three-way valve and two lure lock syringes to create microbubbles. Inject the agitated saline while observing where the bubbles first appear. In this case, the drain tip seems to be placed outside the left ventricle at the level of the mitral valve. This is confirmed in this CT scan. It was done post-procedure, but for another indication. We usually don't do a CT scan to control tip location. Note the perfect location, far caudal and dorsal, and the fluid is gone. We don't require a pre-procedure CT scan. We use ultrasound to, to determine the fluid distribution and the best approach. But we have compiled the following CT images to illustrate how to choose your approach. In this circumferential effusion, we suggest you aim for a dorsal caudal tip placement, which can be achieved with the persternal left ventricle adjacent approach. This effusion is mainly next to the left ventricle. The patient seems to be obese. Use the persternal left ventricle adjacent, but with the 10 cm cannula. This is a rather thin layer of fluid around the ventricles. The first hand choice would once again be the left ventricle adjacent, but a right ventricle adjacent could also work. The following images contain examples of suboptimal tip placements. All these drains were placed using the subsiphoidal approach. Often a different approach could have been used instead, which would have resulted in better tip placement. In this case, the drain is too ventral, leaving some dorsal fluid along the left ventricle. This patient had a gunshot wound to the abdomen and was packed with gauze after an exploratory laparotomy. The subsiphoidal was clearly not the best approach. Similarly, this drain tip is placed far too cephalad and ventral. Ultrasound-guided pericardiocentesis is a superior option to traditional fluoroscopy-guided cannulation. It requires profound in-plane cannulation and Seldinger skills, but this is already part of the intensivist skill set if you're an expert on central lines and thoracic drains. Plan the logistics thoroughly and discuss backup plans with cardiothoracic colleagues, if there are complications. Feel free to reach out to us through interanus.org if you have questions, or want to invite us to hold a workshop in ultrasound-guided procedures. <laughs>